Hello. What's oh. going on in here? Is it a podcast? <laughs> she <Yeah>. knows that. <laughs> She's playing she always with knows. you. <laughs> she always knows. <laughs> Ms. Munch. Yeah, little Ms. Munch. <laughs> you know who else is coy? Who's that? Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Pixel It. My name is Kevin. With me, as always, is Phil. And today... For a very special episode, we have Pim from Pim's Crypt. Pim, how are you doing? I am doing great. It's it's so much fun to be uh, a guest on the podcast. And I, I have to say, before I forget saying this, I'm going to say something to the lovely audience out there, and I'm going to deliberately say it in a way that can be very easily misinterpreted. I have slept with these two fine men so many times. <laughs> So it feels very good that I can finally give something back <laughs> yep. by being here. Oh, uh, we're, 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 uh, it's, uh, I can't believe we're it's taking that context to show, move right on. <laughs> yeah, let's not explain that at all. Well, if, 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 it, if it helps, most of the people I've slept with have not been on the show. Uh, so. <laughs> Oh, it, would, it would get a little crowded if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey. oh. Ah, we have a good time. Phil, I so. was in Savannah too. I saw what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, Kevin knew me in my grad school days. It was a, it was a different time, a different place. Yeah, you're 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 a ma- married man. I'm married. Yeah, I'm all settled down and shit. I've hung up my spurs. It's, yeah. Uh, most so, most most women didn't like the Spurs anyway, so <laughs> can't imagine why. I, it's just you know you know when you when you start shouting Sue in the bedroom, uh, people get uh, they get offended, and I don't know offended. why they get frustrated. <laughs> we are off to a great start, by the way. What Pam. is this, this opening? Is, I'm this loving is, it. I don't know what it is. This is like a Jesse episode. Yeah, I was about this to is say. like this is like Jesse Garasha. Like his spirit has blessed us with. Yeah. You know something, something awful. But Pim, why don't you introduce yourself uh, for those out there who might not know your lovely YouTube channel? Well, thank you for the compliment, first of all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have a YouTube channel called Pim's Crypt, where I make video essays about, well, most things horror. It's a short description, but that's <laughs> that, that, that's what it is. But accurate, <laughs> yes. And <laughs> that's the most important we, uh, thing. Pim, Pim has been a pretty vocal supporter of us since we since we got started. Uh, so I have to I have to thank our, our favorite non-binary Swede for for being uh, such a uh, ardent supporter of the podcast and the uh, you know just just the the path that we've been on for the past two years now. It's been uh, it's been great. Uh, but today we're talking about something else. We're talking about a book, no, eh. short book, novella, not even. Collection. Uh, it's a collection of basically notes that didn't make it into amnesia. We're talking about remember. <laughs> oh, that's harsh. <laughs> third, that third is harsh. Person, third person notes. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> Anybody who's ever played Amnesia the Dark Descent knows that it's it's 70% reading anyway, so that's saying a lot. I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. We're talking about Remember the Dark Descent by uh, Mikhail Hedberg and uh, illustrations by Rasmus Gunnarsson and Jonas Steinick. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're off to a, a good start here. Um, yeah, so just a little backstory. Uh, we decided to do this. I think, Pim, you actually meant... Did you mention it to us? I or? think you're the one who told us about yeah. it. Yeah. I think you told us about it. So this is a PDF of notes that came with uh, Amnesia, The Dark Descent. It was included after, like, with the 1.3 patch of Amnesia, The Dark Descent. They gave you a PDF of all these short stories that provide more context for the characters that are in the game, which is... So Super uh, confusing to me, the only one of us who has not played Amnesia the Dark Descent. Yeah. I, I, going to be honest with you, didn't know what this any of this was about uh, until I read a wiki. <laughs> that, and, that, and that's totally fair. Before we got started, I was actually talking to Pim and I said, you know, this one, this book, it, it isn't enough that you have uh, have played 
it, uh, 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 Amnesia the Dark Descent before you read this. Uh, it would help if you'd played it like a week ago at most. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Because, because like I, I made an entire video talking about all of Frictional Games, because Frictional Games is the development studio behind Amnesia. Uh, and I made a whole video discussing all of their games. And even though I made that video, I mean, it was a while back, but I don't think even I would have been able to to remember some of these names even after having made that video, like right after. Yeah. Because some of these names are just, you know, they show up in some some document somewhere that you might even miss completely. And also, there's just so many names. And I don't, I'm not good with names. I have ADHD. Come on. This is not adapted to me and my needs. I I gotta tell you, ever, ever since Kevin and I started this, um, podcast, I have come to realize just how, uh, bad with names I am, uh, because Kevin is on it with, uh, with these characters. And it's not just because he tends to be the one who takes the notes and everything like that. I'll say, which character was that? And he'll go, oh, it was Bob. And I was like, well, which Bob? It was Bob the second. And, you know, but on page 34, like he's just on it. And I just, I, and, and that, and that's to say nothing of things like Halo Outcast, which we just finished, which has all of these strange alien names in it that have apostrophes before them, which means that every time they mention one of these aliens by name, I think dialogue is starting. I forgot to mention that. That was very frustrating. (laughs) (laughs) Every last one of them had an apostrophe at the The beginning of the name. And yeah, the Sangheili, uh, that is, they tend to have apostrophes in the, at the start of their name. Here's the thing is, I did not actually look up how to pronounce any of those names, <laughs> and I refused to go into the Halo wiki to find out. Uh, and I'm Because I'm like looking at it, I was like, how do I vocalize an apostrophe before a name? Like, like I know there's got to be something there. Right. But right. do, is it, is it, what, it, what would it be? Um, so, you know, I just ignored it. And that was that was I mean, the ticket. That's, that's that's really the way to go about it. I think. Yeah. If you don't understand it. Ignore it. It's the American. Just way. like basically, just that's, and that's why I have to apologize. You, normally, you you talk me up as normally the guy with the the names and the notes. Uh, I don't have the names or the notes for this <laughs> because I didn't understand it and therefore I ignored it. No, I actually read it. I just didn't. I don't. I, uh, I, I, I'm still, I just read the entire wiki explaining it and it's already gone. <laughs> <laughs> it disappeared into the ether. The game is called Amnesia though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's, but that's, also the, the short story collection is called Remember. So uh, remember, <laughs> remember Amnesia. They've got um, us at every stop. Damn. Okay. <laughs> so the first short story in the book is called House of Gerich. And it opens up with a scene between a man named Klaas and uh, another man named Gottschall. Um, and Klaas is like, hey, I'm looking for information. And Gottschall's like, I don't know. That's pretty much the, in- the entirety of the scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the beginning, when you were trying to define this, I, I said a collection. And I, I hesitate to even call this a short story collection because that would necessitate this to be filled with stories. And right. uh, oh my these god, are, these are these are these are these are scenes. I think I think these are, are scenes. Yeah, these are that. the harshest reviews. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, I found yeah. I found some some enjoyment out of some oh, of them. Yeah. I, 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 will, I will say there was like, one that I really off. liked. The one that had a beginning, middle, and end was the one I kind of I really enjoyed. But some of these are just like that's the problem is they just feel like beginnings and then they end. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. So yeah, that we have these we we have class and he's looking for information uh, into a man named Wilhelm. Yeah. Uh, who uh, was from the house of Gerich. And Wilhelm apparently is a person that is key to the lore of, of, uh, of, of this whole thing. And, he uh, worked also, for, uh, for Alexander of Brandenburg, who is right. the main who antagonist is, of the Yes, and that's, game. They, yeah, that's, and Gottschalt says, you should ask for an audience with Baron Alexander. Um, and then uh, Klaas is like, all right, well, I'm going to go to the farmstead that uh, used to be owned by someone else, the Stoll family. Um, and he is looking for, 
or the Stas family. And he's looking for Stas. There is no Stas there. There's a man named Zimmerman there. And he's trying to figure out what what happened with the fire that burned down uh, the barn uh, at their farm. And um, he, he doesn't really get a lot of information because the Zimmermans, I mean, they're they're the second owners of this property. It's not like they uh, they know a whole lot, but they uh, he says, all right, well, you could go talk to. Oh, no, Zimmerman doesn't even tell him anything. No, no, no. just they just leave and he goes to talk to a priest, the priest who who knew the the Stoll family. And the priest is like, OK, well, how about you t- go talk to the youngest daughter? She might still be alive. Uh, he finds the youngest daughter and she married into the Koch family. Uh, and, you know, the the famous the Kochs that they the. The, the right the wing, uh, the, the right wing brothers who yeah, have financed yeah. Republicans for the past. This is where 40 it all years. begins. That's this is where it all begins. Descent. This is the true lore yeah. of this. <laughs> the, the true begins. evil. Yes. The true evil. Like the real evil. <laughs> um, so he finds her. Uh, he gets let in. Uh, the maid introduces class to uh, Frau Koch. And, uh, you know, they they just talk about uh, Emil, 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 who they thought um, uh, she's like, they're like, oh, Emil killed your father because he was the one who set the fire or something like that. Yeah. Um, so and then we get a nice illustration of the farm, the, the barn on fire. Yeah, there's pretty good illustrations. I like them. Yeah. Um, and then class is like, all right, well, I'm going to go talk to, uh, uh, Brandenburg and the end. (laughs) (laughs) I think we skipped some things in between there, but, but yeah, that's, uh, that is sort of, that is sort of the gist of it. Like the, the revelation is basically like, oh, it wasn't Emil who, uh, it wasn't Emil who did the, who, who did the killing. Yeah. 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 He, he was blamed for, uh, the killing though. And that's when Wilhelm took him in and no one knows what happened to him. And, and, uh, and Klaus just figures, well, I'll, I'll, I'll the final stop is going to be Castle of Brennenburg, I guess. And then he goes yeah. there and knocks on the door and then it's over. And it's, it's over one of those him. things where it's like, if you don't have the context, which I mean, if you have the short story, you very likely own a copy of The Dark Descent. Right, uh, exactly. So, so, yeah. so you'll probably know just how bad of an idea it is to visit Castle Brennenburg. Sure. Uh, but as as a self-contained story, it's just, it's a non-ending. It's like, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's the key sure. right yeah. there. It, it's, it's, you know... We, y- and that's the thing I, I tease, but the fact of the matter is you're absolutely right. If you're reading this, you have played the games or you're familiar with the games and that's, it it's came not with like the they, game. It's, a, it's, yeah. this is, this is less of a tie in or adaptation. It's more along the lines of supplemental yes. material yes. because the assumption is Klaus is dead. He goes to Castle Brandenburg and, uh, uh the Baron, who I was reading all about him and his experiments was, you know, people would come to him and he would experiment on them until they were ghouls or whatever. (laughs) 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 Um, So the assumption is like the, the the horrific ending of this short story is just left unsaid. Be like, well, he went to the castle and be like, okay, he went to the castle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, he went like, to the castle. Oh, oh yeah, that castle. That, that castle. one. Yeah, it doesn't really work as a horror story. It's really just. And, and this is the funny thing too. If I recall this correctly, uh, what is like the worst part of this ending is that Klaus isn't actually even mentioned in the game afterwards. Oh wow! Right. So <laughs> it's so it's even. Like it's not even the the like the origin story of like oh this is why this important character came to yeah. Castle Brennenberg. It's just like a dude came to the castle. Yeah, <laughs> we don't know what happened. One nope. night, this man came to the castle. I killed him. <laughs> yeah, that would be something at least. 
Um, that, 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 that story has a beginning, middle, and an end. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the next story is Old Friends, which um, uh, I did. Herbert is more of an important character. He's yes. an actual character mentioned in the game as opposed to Klaus. Uh, so this story is about Herbert as he's making his way through the streets of Algiers uh, looking for uh, a friend of his named Faraj. Um, and Faraj is a local to Algiers. Um, and they meet and, you know, it, it's been a long time since they've seen each other. Um, the idea is that Herbert is there uh, for an archaeological dig out in the desert. And Faraj is going to, like, help him. Like, here's, here, here's where you should be looking. Right. Um, meanwhile, while this conversation is going on, there's shit happening out in the streets. Right. So the French, this is a this is a story of colonialism gone wrong because the French had colonized Algiers for uh, for a while at this point, And people in the Casbah were trying to smuggle weapons in so they could continue the rebellion against the French. Uh, there is a man who has been. Uh, who has been stopped by a man named a uh, French army captain named Ca- Captain Ambrose. Um, Ambrose Ambois. I'm not sure uh, which one, which would be the correct pronunciation there. Um, but uh, he finds that uh, the, the, the guy trying to get into the Casbah has been smuggling rifles through uh, grape containers. So... This interrupts the conversation between Herbert and Farage. Um, basically, they're they're still going on, still talking back and forth about the dig and how important the dig is, and how it's this like we're gonna find so- this is the tomb of Tin Hinan. We're gonna find something that could let us uh, talk to gods in this tomb, um, and he's like. And he's thinking about the Church of England and how he, he's not uh, a huge fan of, of religion. Um, and then their conversation. Um, so what happens is uh, Faraj gives him a sketch of, of something to, to look for. Meanwhile, outside, things getting a little bit more tense. Captain Ambrose is like, all right, fucking shoot things <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're here to do yeah, this is what this, we're here to do let's get our colonialism on let's, let's do get it. our colonialism <laughs> on and, and start and start murdering people oh yeah um so uh, uh the nephew of faraj runs in and is like you gotta uh you gotta get out of here um and then the patrol waits for um everybody to come outside and there is a execution line formed up. They kill everybody and everybody gets shot except for Herbert. Herbert is left alive and Farage is like, ha, the color of your skin saved you. I am dying. <laughs> <laughs> it's also written like this. Uh, uh, where's the exact quote? It's like, Herbert, you're unhurt, smiled Farage, saved by the color of your skin. Herbert hung his head in shame. And I just wrote a note saying <laughs> white guilt. <laughs> That's the moral of this story. That's yeah. the moral of this story is, is, is the white guilt. Yep. When will we learn? When will Some we would learn? argue that that white guilt was even more deadly than the bullet. Ooh. Not Farage, but other people Not, might. For other people <laughs> might argue that. So we get Herbert goes back and he meets with his assistant, Daniel. um, And, uh, you know, Ambrose comes to basically uh, uh, talk to. So Daniel is also an important character. Um, Isn't Daniel the the main character? Yeah, he's the protagonist of the of of Amnesia, the Dark Descent. Yeah. okay, that's what I thought. so, yeah, the Ambrose uh, gives uh, Herbert a star-shaped stone, um, and he's like, why are you giving this to me? And Herbert's like, 
oh, this has been in my family forever. It has something to do with whatever you're looking into. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> you take it. Please enjoy. And, and that's the and that's the end of that story. Um, so now that I I know I've, I've I've read them all, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> the next story is actually a flashback now to how his family got that heart shaped stone. Uh, it takes place, I don't know, nearly three hundred. Yeah, near like basically three hundred years prior, almost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gets it. I mean, I think I think one of the the cool things about uh, this is that, you know, it's it's very Lovecrafty in the sense that it's that's uh, that feeling of like this has been going on for generations and generations and generations. And I I like that sort of thing, that that grand scale. Um, and I think it really starts to kick in at the uh, at the second story there. The old yeah, story. I think I think the first story was I. I I feel like they could have not started with this for that first story and it would have been, <laughs> yeah. it would have made a little bit it would have been more of an intriguing uh, start, you know, because yeah. it's the first story has like tension and action and drama and all that stuff or the second story. Rather, the first story is just like this guy just going around asking people questions and they're like, I don't know. Talk to this yeah. person. <laughs> yeah, get, get me into the markets of Algiers looking for Pazuzu. Let, let, let's 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 just go straight into it. Come on. I think that would have been a better opening. But yeah. 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 So uh, third story is with the blessing of the king. Uh, and it follows a man named Johann Vea uh, is a German man uh, who. Well, Germany didn't exist then, but he's from that area <laughs> from that region <laughs> imperial dutch imperial dutch that's what it says the duchy of brabant part of the holy roman empire there we go there that's, you go that's He's... about as german as it gets sure <laughs> neither holy nor roman nor an empire exactly is my history <laughs> as my history teacher would say <laughs> um so uh, Johan has permission to do to do some research in the French town of Calais, which has just been liberated from the English. Uh, so the French are uh, on on their they're on the they're on their toes here, um, and they're like they stop uh, Johan and ask him to show you know his documents, and he's like, "Here we go. I have permission to go to this church and, and look into." some stuff in there. Uh, they're like, yeah, okay, that's fine, but we're going to take you. We're not going to just let you go there. When they get there, uh, they find that the priest has been hiding an English soldier and they just go in there and murder the shit out of them. <laughs> <laughs> so much brutality in these stories. I know. <laughs> oh, it's almost like uh, brutality begets brutality. I don't know. Put a pin in uh, that. We'll come back yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not convinced yet. Uh, Not convinced yet. So the church is from the 12th century, so it's even 400 years older than uh, than the start of this story. Um, and the idea is that there is like a, a, a crypt in the back that has uh, something hidden in it. And it kind of switches. Suddenly the story, this, this threw me for a loop because the story suddenly switches point of view from Johan to a man named Sokol, who is, this, who is just one of the soldiers, one of the French soldiers. So it's I like... Th it's I like, think this definitely works and is one of the reasons yeah. why I think this is probably my favorite out of these sure. short stories because like, it starts off with Johan and... You know, when he is confronted by these French soldiers, he has this inner monologue where he goes like, should I really involve these people? Because, yeah. you know, they're going to get fucking screwed <laughs> later on. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I should be careful with my words here. Uh, but then you switch <laughs> to, to the French soldier and you, and you've had like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know anything. He doesn't even know the language that Johan is speaking. So when they actually go down to the crypt... Uh, you know just as little as he does, and it's right. Except no, I, you know I, that something bad is about to happen, and I think that's yeah. pretty neat. 
I, 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 I agree. I like I like the fact that we do follow Sokol. I think my only the, the thing that threw me for a loop was because it it switched mid uh, dialogue mm. um, without a normally uh, when they're just like formatting wise, when there's a point of view switch, you at least get like an extra paragraph break or Phil, what's the little symbol called when you that you put in between two paragraphs? Oh. I usually use a, a a pound key, as the kids call pound it. Pound or hashtag. an asterisk, or to <laughs> sim, to simplify um, uh, location, time, or point of or point of view shift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that was my only uh, thing. But yeah, so we get Sokol's point of view, and he's like, I don't know what's going on. I don't even understand what's what the, the like the captain and the and Johan are speaking to each other. I assume in some. Uh, some middle German or something like that. And um, <laughs> Sokol is being asked to lift, uh, to move this stone slab with him, uh, which has uh, a counterweight on it. So he, they start moving the, the stone slab to, to open the door and it's lighter than expected. And then the counterweight breaks and hits Sokol in the shoulder. So he's like injured and has to like stay back. And he's told to walk it off, which I was like, he's, I'm he's so told to walk it I'm off. so glad yeah. they used that phrase. I, what am I in third grade PE again? What the <laughs> hell? There's I'm another so line in there which I I really like. It's when when the soldiers and, and Johan uh, go in there, and and uh, and uh, the one French soldier is still uh, left behind, and he he yells out to them and he says, "Hey guys." <laughs> and it's like, it's like when 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 the line being said by this French fifteen hundred soldier could also be said by like Markiplier to open a, right, yeah, a exactly. let's play. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe the line shouldn't be there. Is all I'm saying. I'm gonna say yes. That actually threw me. I was like, that doesn't seem like a lot. Like a phrase. Yeah. In 1550 Calais. <laughs> I think, you know, I had a similar instance. Uh, it was when one of them sees the uh, that the uh, the soapstone thing for the first time, and they just go, dude. I thought that was really inappropriate for the, uh, oh, Kevin. <laughs> I, mi- I missed that. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I've forgotten about he's, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phil's lying. I'm um, lying. I'm lying. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised. No, you, that boy. I, and I, nice. I just want to say as well that that like I respect uh, Mikael Hedberg as a writer because he mm-hmm. is uh, he is actually the um, uh, the main writer for Soma, which is like one of the yes. best horror games ever made. So it's not like yes. we're bashing someone who is lying down. Like this this guy, oh. he he knows his stuff. No, oh, no, yeah, he he definitely knows his stuff. I think yeah. it's it's more akin to. And this, honestly, all this stuff is like the way it's written, like in, it's there's good stuff here. I think mm-hmm. it's I think all of these segments could have um, they could have benefited just from like having at least all of them a scene that just buttoned them up. Like the first one just could have like just tell us about him going into the castle and the Baron killing him just like flesh it out just a little bit more. So it has that di- di- distinct ending. And obviously all of this stuff, like imagining like all of this and then you pop it into all of the lore and storytelling of Amnesia, the Dark Descent. It's all good. And Soma is probably one of the uh, best written games of all oh, time. Yeah. Soma, yeah. that Soma, being said, I, yeah, there's some weird stuff in here. When I realized that it here. was the same writer, I was like, holy shit, because well, he, is a, he, he is a very talented writer. That much is clear. And, I think uh, it's I think it's like uh, more along the lines of, what's his name? Um, was it JMS, J. Michael Straczynski? Who, who wrote the Dark Souls book? Oh, oh, uh, um, no, that was, uh, oh, crud, Stackpole. Not Straczynski, Stackpole, the other Stackpole. S. Yeah, it's like <laughs> Stackpole writing Dark Souls, like... Uh, and it's not it's not as bad as Stackpole's Dark Souls, but that was that. <laughs> it's no, just yeah, like, this is, this is it's like not, above sometimes that. Yeah. sometimes great authors miss a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're not as we all do. As, as we, we all, all do. do. I, I think I think anybody who is able to take 
uh, the tired storyline of wh- what is being human? What is a soul? And uh, as as uh, Mikhail did in uh, Soma and actually make me give a shit, uh, that, that right there was the biggest, <laughs> highest compliment I could uh, possibly give him. I, I, yeah, this guy, this guy knows his stuff. Um, there's no question about that. Uh, and we do tease and make fun of the people we love because it's... Do you you didn't play Soma things. until after Cat did her video on it, right? Yeah, Phil? I literally was a voice in her video before I played the fucking game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I went, and it was like, it literally, she was like, could you please read this and, and do the thing? And, and I went, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and, then, and then I got a notification that it was like 75% off. And I was like, well, that's a sign. Okay. And I, <laughs> I just bought it and played it. And no, no, it was, it was magnificent. Loved it. So one of the things, though, that makes this particular story so good in this book is that it does have like a real, it has a real moment of just pure beyond time and space horror. Because mm-hmm. what ends up happening is the soldiers go in and they're in this room and there's and and Sokol is just like watching them go in and there's a sphere in there. And as they're like touching and playing with the sphere, there's this blue light shooting from it. And it's causing like the shadows to turn into like literal flesh and close in on on the soldiers. And uh and Johan takes the orb and just runs from there. And Sokol is watching as his friends get swallowed up into a w- the word brooding abomination. Yeah. Um, so then uh, Johan comes out and he he kicks the wedges out so that the door shuts. And uh, yeah, it's it's it basically. Uh, Johan f- apologizes to Sokol and runs away. And the basically Sokol is just like left with that, that limestone or soapstone shard like thing uh, that his descendant gave to Herbert years later in order to open the tomb of Tin Han- Tin Hanan. Tin Hanan. Was, yeah. Yeah. Tin Hanan. Which kicks off the events of the game, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> basically. No, I, I, I think this is probably the strongest story in the collection for that very reason. It, it, it accomplishes what uh, clearly Hedberg has set out to do with this, and uh, which is to have some Easter eggs, some little prequel bits and that sort of thing. Uh, but while doing that, it gives us a lot more... It gives us more context on the game... Um, as opposed, I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes we're getting more context on the game, and sometimes the game is giving us more context on the stories, if that makes sense. And yeah. this is one of those times that I think it is it's very strong. And frankly, it could have worked as a standalone story. You you wouldn't necessarily have to have played uh amnesia. Sorry, Ripley is getting very she's getting is, pushy. Ripley <laughs> is demanding attention. So let's see that. Let's see that chonky cat. Oh, yes. Fatty. <laughs> no. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that butt. <laughs> <laughs> Show me your butt, Ripley. Yeah. Very impressive. Yes. In our family, we like a little more meat in your seat. That's all there is to it. Uh, but yeah, I, is, I agree. That, it, it, go ahead, it's. <laughs> I, I I do agree that I I I get a sort of the statement of Randall uh, Randall Carter vibes from mm. this story. I don't really know why, but like it, it feels like a proper Lovecraft story, and Lovecraft yes. obviously is like the main influence for oh yes. well a whole lot of of fictional games. So I absolutely believe it works on its own, and also that it's it sort of it works both to inform other short stories, but also. The game because Johan is well not a prominent character in in the actual game but he is responsible him Agrippa and and Alexander of Brandenburg they are like the three who are sort of responsible for creating this sort of tincture or whatever that 
is supposed to be used for the ritual that will send Alexander home to his home planet. <laughs> home home, home uh, dimension or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. I, I think this is, it's, it's strong. For, and, and on top of that, the scope, you know, sending us back f- some 500 years, uh, I want to say about 300 years before the events of the... Um, it game. is. It's it's just about three hundred before the events of the game. I mean that that I like that. That I love a nice epic kind of tale like that, and I think that really works with uh, the cosmic horror level of it, and and it works with the gothic uh, horror level of the game. And yeah, I I thought this one this one was I think the strongest of the bunch. You know what's yeah. funny is you bring up because you bring bring up uh, Lovecraft and. Um, so like the statement of, of Randolph Carter and and some of his, his other stories. And I noticed like something that that Hedberg fall, fell into falls into a little bit in here. Uh, and it's a criticism I have of Lovecraft as well is abruptness mm-hmm. where like there will be like a really big build up and then the end the, there's li- there's little to no falling action. that's just like. <laughs> sort of, sort of like uh, what is it? The um, uh, mountains of madness. Um, it's it's you know this epic epic book of. I write to you, fair readers, to warn <laughs> you of the mountains of madness. What we saw there, and then they get there, and they're like, we saw the things, and then we ran, and that's the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like someone was gearing up to tell you a really cool story, and in the last five minutes, they were like, I am starving. I've got to make a sip. So we, we, we went the, the Cthulhu was there, and he chased us. We got the boat. We left. Anyway, is that roast beef? Because I could go. You don't have horseradish on hand, do you? Because okay, yeah, I could yeah, go for I, a, I, I could I, go for a proper schmear right back. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I I agree. It is a very old fashioned kind of um, way of writing, and you see it um, in a lot of those old pulp. Uh, kind of things, Robert E. Yeah, Howard. Yeah, so the pre nineteen pre nineteen fifties, I'd say fifties and uh, like nineteen hundred to nineteen fifties. Those that pulp era of writer, especially the horror sof- uh, sci fi writer, did have that vibe. And obviously, I think they're hu- clearly huge inspirations on Edberg's oh, uh, yeah. work. You know, uh, especially so Soma is like oh. Soma is basically like. What if I took Isaac Asimov and Ray Bradbury <laughs> and like all these 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 Classics. these sci-fi writers from the fifties and sixties and just mm, jammed them together? Yep. <laughs> it's and you know comes up with something that is I would even wager to say Soma is better than a lot of their works uh, in terms of questioning what makes. Uh, what makes a a person a person? You know, mm-hmm. I think it's a it's a good capitalization on all that. But yeah, yeah. So he's he's clearly inspired uh, by that entire era. Yeah, um, yeah. And 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 it it reflects. You know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying there. Waiting for the rain is the biggest bummer in the book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even more so when you know the full context of it. Yeah, it, I did not get it, and then I read it afterwards, and I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, uh, want to ruin so, your day? Read this one. Yeah. So Elise uh, is watching, uh, it's the funeral for her brother, uh, Friedrich, and she's watching uh, the grave digger uh, fill in the grave, and... Her uh, dad, uh, Gustav, is a real asshole. Uh, yeah. <laughs> literally, literally says, why couldn't have been one of the girls instead? Yeah. It's, <laughs> one of also, his first lines, too. It's like, yeah, whoa, it's one okay. Of the first, right yeah. off the bat, worst That's dad of the year. Just yeah. not, not have, do I have my dad of the year mug up here? I do not. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, my Daughter and wife gave me a a, a, a mug that says "Okayest Dad Ever." <laughs> <laughs> C plus. 
in the inside it says jk you're the greatest but you Aww. know it's it's just a funny it, yeah no uh it is a funny mug um <laughs> so gustav is like why couldn't the girls have died and elise is like oh i'm gonna go talk to uh my male best friend jacob and uh and his cat tinker and jacob is burying a apple seed which places this before or places this after the next story um because we'll get to it but yeah <laughs> this is chronologically this is right immediately before the events of the game uh from what i understand like the day before or yeah, something yeah. like that um so uh she's hanging out with jacob and she's talking about t- talking about his plan her plans to run away she's like i'm tired of my old man um and she's always saying smoke up johnny um <laughs> i don't know why i went breakfast club but i did I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um they are uh going back to uh going back to the farm and um they could see she could see her home and it's Gustav Zimmerman's farm which is this is the farm from the first story mm-hmm. this is the Zimmerman farm uh that that Klaus was talking to people at uh, from the first story, but I see I, it was important. Duh, it turns <laughs> ah. it loops back around. Um, so uh, Gustav continues to be abusive and decides a good use of his energy is to flip the dining table over with all the <laughs> plates and utensils going, flying everywhere. I mean, you got to remember this is the 1830s, so I mean that's that's basically him telling them he loves them. Uh, so that's oh my this, God. It was just a different time. It was just a different time. You know, <laughs> this is an 1830 Germanic man, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. That was when men were men. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> For all the, <laughs> you take that any way you want. <laughs> it was a, it was a simple time back then. You said to throw a plate of lovingly prepared food against the wall to say, <laughs> I love you and w- um, wish your child dead to say, I'm sad. Uh, <laughs> that's what the, that's actually what the song more than words is referring to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't know, um, but tears in heaven, uh, it was, there was a verse that was cut out where he actually talks about wishing the daughter died instead. Uh, oh, okay. So it's <laughs> Jesus Christ! <I'm laughs> yeah, you see, this this is actually not a bummer story. We're just reading it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We're, this is a really happy family. Right. Really happy. We're, we're looking at the wrong side of the coin here. It's, just, it's all about perspective. It's perspective, it's all baby. Perspective, baby. <laughs> More than words. <laughs> Is all you have oh, to God. do to throw that plate. <laughs> <laughs> if I had known this episode was going to get so dark. <laughs> I don't, Pim, I don't know what it is. Whenever we have a guest on, that is when we get our darkest. We, I don't know what it is. Like, we, it's not that we have, you know, spotless reputations in terms of our senses of humor when it's just the two of us. <laughs> but there's something about having a third where we just want to act out. And I don't know what it is. It's like, it's like the babysitter's gone. Right. <laughs> exactly. Bas- babysitter's ourselves. Yeah, um, that's that's me. I'm 13. I can take care of myself. <laughs> I don't need a babysitter, Mom. Um, <laughs> so Elise runs outside uh, during the kerfuffle and grabs her her bug out bag. Um, yeah, yeah she, <laughs> which is, she was prepped, man. She was prepped. She's ready uh, to go. It, it's got uh, burned wood. Uh, a button carrying a decorative insignia and a broken gun. 
No, wait, wasn't that what she left behind? That's though? what she I left think behind. She, that was yeah, in the yeah, I, I think she got another behind. sack and, yeah. and she filled it with like uh, like a half loaf of bread and like potatoes. Oh, got it. Yeah, I think yeah, that yeah. was but it. She just, she was just, so she, she, yes, you're right. She does grab food, uh, a half loaf of bread and a potato. And a potato. A um, couple potatoes. Uh, and starts running and her dad catches up with her uh, because he is a fully grown farmer man. He sprints after her. That's a lot of cardio, you know what I mean? Yeah, and he he gets very abusive physically. He tries to choke her to death. Yes, he does. Then he steps out of it because, thank God. (laughs) (laughs) Because because it's the 1830s, not the 1820s. Come on. (laughs) Those days are behind us. Those days are behind us. Choking your kid out in a field. That's so 1824. Because she tried to run away from you for... Throwing the dinner out. Uh, I, wonder, I don't I see the irony she, of this at yeah, all. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so he Homer Simpsons her for a little bit and then yeah. lets her go. <laughs> and then she starts running again. Um, uh, and he's he's actually about to kill her with an axe. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Um, she runs away and she sees a carriage coming down the road. Uh, towards her, 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 towards the farm, and she's like, "This is going to be great. This is somebody to help us." Yeah, no. <laughs> it, Ron Howard voice. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Arrested Development. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's see how Elise is doing. Oh, oh, oh no. God! Oh, oh no! Tur- turn off the cameras right now. <laughs> we can't like, show yeah. this. On <laughs> we can't show this. No, no, we can't do this. This is what did Fox found. So, yeah, so this. for for context, uh, the the carriage uh, approaching her is actually Daniel, the protagonist of the game, and this is when he is still working for Alexander, and his his task was basically get him a bunch of people so he could. Uh, uh, torture them, uh, give them amnesia potions, and then torture them some more. Yeah. So, uh, and and Elise is Daniel's last victim before he realizes, am I the baddie? Right. <laughs> I'm the baddie. Uh, and so he takes the amnesia drink, and that sets off the events of the of the game. And and here's the thing: I'm glad he got there. But this isn't a small family. It took him a while to get there. This is it's a pretty decent sized family. He went family. through uh, the, a mother, a father, and two other daughters, I believe, yeah. before yeah. he got to whew, Daniel. Uh, yeah, you know little, that's you know what they say. You know, kill one member of the family, shame on you. Kill two, three, four, five members of the family, shame on me. Uh, <laughs> Two through five are are are, are we're the real shame so sandwich. That's is. on me. You know, that's, that's I, on, I'm gonna I'm gonna take full responsibility for that, and I am sorry. So, I, I killed a lot of people, Pim. I love you. <laughs> sorry. I almost it's about time a, you confess. I almost, <laughs> almost, I almost grabbed the spoon again. Um, <laughs> From from the episode from a couple weeks ago, the spoon's just been just been sitting here. It's been hanging out. Have not brought it back down to the kitchen. Don't even remember why I had a spoon in the first place. There's nothing on it. I, I don't know. Just anyway, a lucky spoon. Just, just a lucky spoon at this just, point. It's it's his sidekick. It's his my it's my sidekick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the last story is the Outrider, um, and it is from the point of view of. Uh, a man named Gabriel who is, you know, he, so the outrider from what I gather is, is on horseback separate from a carriage and just goes ahead of the carriage to make sure there's nothing going on up the road. Cause the carriage is slow. Single horse, uh, horse rider is going to be faster. So he goes up, he's like, yeah, things are fine. There's a, there's a town up there. We're going to, we're going to be all good. And uh, so he's escorting an Englishman uh, named Daniel um, to to an inn. Um, Gabriel what? is what? Huh? Um, Jacob uh, Gabriel is uh, goes and he talks to uh, Jacob, who we just met in the previous story. And this is where 
um, uh, Gabriel is like, hey, uh, let's 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 talk out. Yeah, you're you have a cute cat. That's a that's a cute cat. Hey, it's Tinker. Um, they listen to the stories of uh, whatever Daniel is talking about inside. They get some food. Um, and uh, I think at this point uh, they give he's like, you should actually plant the uh, the apple seed. And that's a few weeks later. He's planting the apple seed on the day mm -hmm. that Elise and her family are kidnapped. Um, and then there's like some creature, uh, a dark figure kidnapping Tinker, the cat. And y'all y'all know a quick way to to get somebody over in a story is to save the cat, you know? Yep. And in this case, it's literally saving the cat. Literally saving the cat, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, um, what's his name? Gabriel chases after the creature. Uh, he has his, he has his rifle with him. Um, and he, uh, shoots, shoots the creature. The creature drops the cat. Tinker gets out, climbs up a tree to safety. Um, um a man named, uh, Herzel, um, uh, comes out and he's like, "What's what's going on out here?" And Gabriel's like, "Yeah, there's a there's a thing." And Herzel's like, "Oh, yeah, I know those things." Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, those those things. Uh, those and damn Gabriel's things. like, "Yeah, I saw them when I was a kid. <laughs> um, the the monsters that come out from the forest." Um, so basically, Gabriel is like, "I can't let this thing." Uh, live. He is. Uh, he follows the thing, um, and it's referred to as the thing several times in the, in the story. He follows it to a cave, and Gabriel is about to shoot it, uh, and then he noticed that there is a bunch of these creatures hiding in this cave, um, and he uh, he just gets the f out of there. And the thing that he encountered is one of the grunt creatures. That's like the thing that that's like following you throughout the game. I, I believe it's the you know with the the, the jaw that's like. Eh. <laughs> yeah, he, he describes he describes the appearance of one of these creatures as if like like melted wax yeah. kind mm -hmm. of. It's a very look to, to the face. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And it's like it's like the, the bones are overgrown or something like that. Yeah. Um, so Gabriel gets out of there, um, and uh, he realizes that this is like basically his, one of his father's jobs in town was just like uh, <laughs> uh, might have been chasing after these things. Oh no, no, his father might have been killed one of, by one of these things or yeah. killed himself after running into one of these things. Um, and so Gabriel considers killing himself, but then does not uh, yes. after looking up at Orion the Hunter. Um, and he just drinks some cold water from a stream. I think I think if more people would just look at Orion the Hunter and drink cold water from the stream, I think most of their depression and anxiety would be cured. Exactly. I think, Phil. I think that's, that's the message. It's that's really, what my therapist keeps saying. Yeah, like my, that's yeah. the that's the miracle cure. It's yeah. not it's not medication, it's exercise. Mm. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why, why do you refuse to look at Orion? <laughs> look at Orion. The He's right there. <laughs> He's right there. The epilogue yeah. is uh from Jacob's diary. Um and uh he he's like, hey, uh, I I hope I hope the Englishman enjoys himself so much that he never leaves the castle. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so yeah, because he wants Gabriel to to still be there. Yeah, exactly, yeah. because he loves Gabe, he loves hanging out with his boy Gabriel. Yeah, yeah, you're my boy Gabriel. Yeah, he's That's so good at saving cats. He's I mean, very good at saving cats. He did do us that favor. I don't have to complain about them murdering a cat. Uh, so so that's what, nice. what's what's overall opinions, Pim? We'll, we'll start with you. Overall thoughts on this guy? Well, we have definitely touched upon yeah. most of, of of our 
general opinions, but uh, <laughs> mine as well. But um, yeah, I, I think as supplementary material, it's all right. Uh, I like knowing that that he had by has written better things. Yeah. It's 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 uh, it's a bit of a shame to see like. Because you see the potential here. There mm -hmm. are these moments where you're like, oh, this is where he gets to shine as a writer. But yeah, it, it really does feel like this could have been, if you'd shortened them a bit, th these could have been like summarized in notes in the game. Right. I do think it's kind of funny, though. Like my first impression of this made me laugh out loud when, because, <laughs> because as I said in, in my video, I, because of my ADHD, I, I have a really hard time reading the notes in horror games in general. So I, I admit that there's a lot of story that I miss, but luckily there are people who can summarize that for me and, you know, the wikis and all of that. But it just was so funny to me that, like, a, such a huge part of Frictional's games are about finding these notes and reading them. And not, like, two pages into the first short story... The story is interrupted with a literal fucking note yeah. <laughs> that you have to read in order to progress. It just point. made me laugh like, out loud. I heard you point. like notes, so we put notes in your notes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. It's true. It's true. He's like, yeah, this most definitely is a frictional games production. This <laughs> yes, this short story collection, like for sure. Uh, I, I find that pr pretty funny, but but yeah, like it, it's it's all right. Mm -hmm. I, I did enjoy uh, with the blessing of a king, a yes, lot. Well, yes. not a lot, but you know, like more than I expected after having read the the previous two. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I'm happy for that. Yeah. 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 Phil, uh, what do you think? I well, I agree. I I think um, I think the thing that saves this is the context of knowing that this came with a patch. This was never. Uh, <laughs> they never put this out for people to buy, you know? It was just like a matter of like, here it is, it's free. If you're playing the game, here's a little something extra. They never uh, they never marketed this as just as some sort of, you know, tie-in text. And, and yeah, which would have been kind of a little... Uh, uh, they 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 knew what they were doing with this, and I, I think that's respectable. I, I totally agree with you, Pim, in the sense that uh, this is one of those instances where as writers, different writers are good at different things. And when you are largely a video game writer, you are um, working within a visual medium. So when you find these letters, for example, in the castle, uh, you are in the dark, surrounded by creepy music and creepy art and possibly being stalked and 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 then you add into it this weird esoteric letter and you go what the it and it just boom it sends all of your fight or flight you know synapses firing and it's it's super fun uh in that sense but when but but when he was given when he had to set the scene himself and do all of the lifting it wasn't quite as effective and does that mean i don't think he could no no it just means that mostly what he does is right for video games uh, and that makes a difference because you yeah. don't have uh, the soundtrack and the graphics and everything else. I think the same, basically it's similar critiques between this and um, Alan Wake, to be honest, because as we all know, Rick Burroughs, yeah. Rick Burroughs is, is Sam Lake. Uh, with a, <laughs> there's no way that's, that that's just not Sam Lake right. writing under a double assumed pen name. <laughs> right, right. Um, well, you know, it's interesting you said, because I was thinking at one point when we were rereading Alan Wake, I, we actually said, we both said that it would be cool if instead of this novelization, what we got was the book, the actual book that uh, that uh, yeah, they were I remember you saying that. But the thing is, I think if we got that, it would be a lot more like this. It would be so much more esoteric. It would be so much more sure. um, d high context and difficult to delve into. Sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, it. it I'm. It depends. Um, but yeah, I. I, I agree. I. I'd say my credit, my critiques for you know, are are both uh, for Hedberg and Sam Lake is similar in that 
they know what they're doing in the context of interactive medium um, and that it's just a little bit more difficult to pull off with that. Like like you were saying, Phil, it's just, it's just a tad more difficult to pull off without everything else being considered. Mm-hmm. And like some, you know, screen screenplay writers, for example, don't necessarily ne- translate to novel writers, no, you know, because no. a screenplay... Uh, somebody who's writing a screenplay knows that it's being supported by visuals, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's, um, I think there is something to be said where uh, the different mediums uh, present their own challenges. And uh, I I think I would love to see if uh, uh, Hedberg has written anything else in prose uh, I found I found some short films. Um, I I I'm, I think one of the uh, honest I didn't know this, but I think his involvement in the upcoming remake of Alone in the Dark might be uh, one of the most promising things about that. Uh, yes, game. Uh, oh wow! Aside from, I didn't aside realize from he was David involved. Harbour being in it. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it he uh, let's see, depth. That seems to be a film. So that's, so he's primarily worked in visual medium, like video yes. games and film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes. I, sense. I checked out his LinkedIn, and that's that's sort of the, uh, <laughs> that's the whole thing. That's that's what I yeah got from it. Yeah, but yeah, he is he is the uh, the creative director and writer for the Alone in the Dark remake. That is that is so that is very news. promising. Yes, definitely. That it's so funny too goodness. because like the the studio. Pieces Interactive, they're located in in a town that I've been to more than a couple of times. It's oh, like cool. the the game devs cap- capital of Sweden, basically, where they uh, educate future game developers. It's like that place called Hövde, and then there's like this small island called uh, Gotland, which also has a bunch of uh, uh, game dev education stuff. So it's pretty cool to like know that the, the future of the Alone in the Dark franchise is being made in a town like so close yeah, that that's to awesome. me personally it's 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 strange especially considering that i have a very personal relationship with that franchise right uh to the point that i'm actually making a video about that very fact um so uh, yeah very excited for that project that's cool that's, that's really, really cool. cool yeah you got to you got to get out there and see if you can't find some some memorabilia or something like that just to just to hang it's, on to and i oh, yeah I, I have my i have a I'm, my intention is to somehow get into that office and nice. get a sneak peek or something, you know. Nice. That's be, that'd be awesome. I'm looking forward to that video. That'll be great. So yeah. is this, so the, the one that's coming out it is a remake of the first one? It's not a, it's, a it's not like a, it's a remake. It's, it, okay. it's a sort of remake of like, from what I understand, uh, from what I understand, it, it's, it's like a remake of, it's like concepts from the first three, it. like it's a like a like a melting pot of all three, or maybe it's just the first two. It's but they've sort like of a, borrowed elements from the, the from several. I, but the term I keep hearing is love letter. They like say it's like it's a love letter to those original. I hope what I hope is they get the influences of the Christian Slater film in there too. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> If you want to get a full round, uh, uh, you know, adaptation, and you can't forget Christian, uh, but uh, you can. But uh, <laughs> Honestly, I mean, there is an alternative skin for like the original Edward Carnby from the 1992 game oh, in the remake. Awesome. So maybe they could just throw in like an alternative skin where it's Christian Slater's <laughs> face instead of David Harbour. I'm just saying, it's a possibility. <laughs> I'd play that. That'd be amazing. I do enjoy the fact that David Harbour is is going to be is going to be the voice. Uh, I love that for the man character so much. Mm. The only cast so listed on the IMDb is Edward, Ed, uh, David Harbour and Jodie Comer, mm. who she's been. I her, she looks familiar. She was in she's, Killing Eve and uh, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she's one of those faces you just know. Yeah, she's just been yeah. in a, been in a lot of a lot of things. Um, so yeah, no, that was that was uh, that was remember uh, amnesia, the dark descent. Remember that it, game. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we forgot to say it, but I want to say it. Have we uh, have we put the body in the marsh? Oh, oh 
God damn. Have we officially put the body in the marsh? We oh, have. We've shit. put the body in the marsh. When I tell you to dump a body in the marsh, you dump them in the marsh. Uh, oh. I wouldn't be surprised if Alexander, uh, the uh, the Baron, put some some bodies in some marshes. God I mean, damn. <laughs> Pim, Thank you, you, you can't see the marsh anymore. There's just bodies. There's just everywhere. bodies. There's just now. bodies like, everywhere. <laughs> put the body in the well pile of bodies. Put the yeah, body yeah. in the body. <laughs> There's less marsh, more pile. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the marsh to body ratio is just way off. <laughs> get, out, get out of control. Here. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> The guy from John Hancock is not out there getting yeah. a, blow, a blow job anymore because there's too many bodies. <laughs> too many bodies. <laughs> Do you want a blow job when you're smelling rotting flesh and swamp farts? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> One or the other, please. Oh, God. I can't fucking believe it. Spends all night putting it out there. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Uh, what can't you fucking believe? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. French is my spirit animal. I just <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. All right. Well, I, I have I have one question left. Uh we'll start with Phil. Um Phil. Ooh, what are you playing? Oh, oh, well, uh, it's funny. Since we spoke last, uh, I actually, uh, I, I, I'm trying something new. I stopped playing video games. Uh, I've been running 5K. Uh, mm -hmm. I haven't eaten meat or uh, drunk alcohol in that time. Uh, so a little, little different. You Who know? are you and what have you done with Phil? It's been Baldur's Gate 3. It's nothing but Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get my girlfriend. I can't. I, I've I've hurt so many people in this game. I don't mean to be a sex machine, uh, but I've just been. I I I had I had Shadowheart as my girlfriend because if you've got an opening collection of characters and one of them is the hot goth chick, I'm gonna do that. I'm going for that. Um, and then I found out that we would have the op uh, option of a broad beamed fucking. Infernal engine heart having barbarian horned heavy metal monstrosity, and I want I want her. I want her instead. And uh, and somewhere along the way, I accidentally seduced Will. I thought we were just dancing, <laughs> <laughs> and he became my boyfriend. And 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 Shadowheart was like weirdly cool with it. Like was like like you know I'm so, I, I I'm sad, but I'm happy. You're happy, and and all that stuff. And I didn't. Ha and then I had to break up with Will because I didn't have the heart to tell. I, neither of them are the one. I want crazy uh, heavy metal devil lady. Uh, uh, Carlac. Carlac is my girlfriend. That is that's she's it's it's meant to be. Uh, yeah. So I'm 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 gonna it, it's it, I'm I, I'm working on that. Uh, I'm, I'm currently in the process of uh, as Kevin put it when we were chatting about this. I believe we we're talking about the same scene in the game. Uh, some light uh, Githyanki genocide. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it's just the goblin. Very light, uh, you it's, know. Yeah, they... it's, it's the goblin camp all over again. I'm just murdering my way in, murdering my way out. Goblin uh, camp all over again. Baldur's Gate 3 is the most murder hobo y session of DD I have ever played, and I've been playing since I was 12. So <laughs> that's saying so. <laughs> Phil has been playing Dungeons and Dragons for nearly 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and this is as murder hobo y as I've ever been. I usually, these games, I'm like, I like playing the charismatic characters, the persuasion, the deception. I go hard thief, you know, stuff like that. And uh, and that has worked out. Um, but I'm killing a lot of people. Uh, it is it is shocking. Um, I also got drunk the other night and uh, continued on. In my, the game or you? In, the, in me, just me. Uh, 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 just me. <laughs> Uh, and uh, oh, thank God! I was worried yeah, there for a second, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and decided I needed to uh, uh, continue my quest for more 
of the Vampire Survivors DLC achievements and found my hero, Fat Squirrel Guy. Uh, perfect. He's, he's, he's a big squirrel with a giant belly and a big sack, and he's got bocce balls that he throws all over the place. And I went, <laughs> I, I, that's it. That's it. That's my guy. Uh, and that's, that's who I am now, a big fat squirrel with a sack. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to re-engineer any of that. Uh, nope. That's just, that's just <laughs> perfect as it is. Yeah. It's like so I have found the character I identify with the most, and I'm leaning into it. <laughs> I'm leaning into it. It's it's a rodent with a gut. I, that's all I. I'm playing a dwarf thief on one game and a fat squirrel monster on the other. I'm living my best life, and no one can tell me otherwise. You know, moisturized in your lane. You know, you're not. <laughs> Not stressing. <laughs> no, nah, man. I feel good. I feel good. All my all my stress headaches have left. Uh, it's just life is life is good. Uh, so yeah. So this is the best game ever made, then, right? I think so. It's pretty pretty good. It, well, what is funny, Pim, is is we were talking about how, and you and I have talked about this as well. This has been a hell of a year for horror games. Yes. And, uh, just constant and and. Me and Kevin like to do our little games of the year list at the end of the year, and and I've been keeping an eye on stuff and trying. And I thought, man, I've got to, I got to shake things up uh, if if I don't want my games of the year list to be ten horror games. Basically, uh, I need and and uh, and I said, you know what, Baldur's Gate is going to steal my soul, and and but but a nice high fantasy epic adventure might be just the thing to just shake things up a little bit. And within five minutes, gore and horror and mayhem, it is the, it is a graphic game. It is really fucked up. Uh, but when mind flayers are your basic main high level antagonist, I guess that kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, the mind flayers are gonna be, are gonna, are gonna Make a mess of things. Oh, they to always be honest. Do. It's like a do. little 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 baby Cthulhu's, you know. Yeah, they're adorable. Yeah. Running around, tentacles everywhere. Yeah, whipping you with their towels. Just, just, just playful kids, really. Yeah. Uh, speaking of horror games, Pim, Pim, what have you been playing? Well, I actually just today, because of the project that I talked about before, I I just started playing the original Alone in the Dark for the first time oh. since. I want to say 1998, hmm. or something, something like that. Uh, it was the first horror game that I experienced. I don't remember if I actually played it myself. I, I think it was my dad who sat with me and he played it. I'm not sure if we got past the attic. And I mean, that is a really short section, so maybe he got <laughs> scared, or I don't know. Uh, but it, it's... Um, it is a lovely time so far. I haven't played that long. It is a lovely time, but it's also just a reminder of how mean this game can be. It's like <laughs> you can you can you can lock yourself out of finishing the game like 15 minutes into it. That there was... is this part where where you uh, you unlock like a drawer and it contains two small mirrors that you have to set up in order to to eliminate two like purple almost dragon-like demons guarding uh, the stairs. And if if you're carrying these mirrors and you are attacked by an enemy, there is a risk, allegedly, that these mirrors can break. And if they Bam. do, well, you can't use them and That's you just it. have to start over from the beginning. The game won't tell you this, obviously, but... <laughs> Nope. Yeah, and then there's also like this this part where there is this room where you have to to pick up like a, a a box of matchsticks, and there's a ghost sitting in a chair, like a transparent reddish ghost just sitting chilling, as ghosts do. Sure. And if yeah. you come too close to the ghost, it just stands up and it evaporates and is replaced by like a swarm of, of colorful orbs that follow you around, and if they get close to you, you die instantly. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And there was also like a book in this game that if you read it, you die. Oh yeah, there you <laughs> go. That was, that, that was games in the 80s and 90s. It was like video game designers to their, their public. We hate you. Enjoy the game. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, you you hard locked yourself out of any ever finishing the game an hour ago. 
No. We didn't want to tell you that. <laughs> no, yeah. You seem to be having fun, so. <laughs> we want you to be stuck with this game for months. Yeah. It yeah. is actually like, it takes one hour. I actually think it takes a literal hour to complete this game if you know what you're doing. Yeah. But, like, the devs want you to be afraid of every decision you make or every item that you pick up, everything you, every room. Like, it, you, it, it is... Like, it, it gets credit for influencing Resident Evil, but I think it should get a lot of credit for just how much dread it it creates yeah. by just... I, I think the... the um, God, what is his name? Frederick something. He, uh, like, the the head of Infogrames uh, mm. back in the day, he said something along, li- along the lines of, well, there is this part where if you walk across the floor, it will just the floor will break and you will die instantly and that will make you be afraid of of wherever you're walking and like the example with a book it's like well you know now you're going to be afraid of reading literature which i already am in real life yeah. uh, so you know i don't need that um but yeah it, it really is a game that like it, it doesn't look threatening by today's standards but it definitely wants to put you in a mindset where you're afraid of everything and that it deserves so much credit for for being a game that came out in 1992 that it accomplishes all of these things oh yeah um, so yeah i'm 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 playing it with a guide because yeah I, yeah. I I don't want to die from reading a book. Like, that's a fear I have in my regular life. <laughs> I don't need that while I'm enjoying escapist media. Um, but uh, I, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the vibes of it. Like, the aesthetics, I I love it. I love the music. I I just randomly stumbled upon the, the sort of end credits song and it's just this sort of 80s banger <laughs> <laughs> I love when they do and, that and I listen to it on repeat like it's it's so the soundtrack is so good it's I it's uh, yeah. it, pr- pretty basic by today's standards once again but I mean it, it yeah. is a great game yeah so I mean, it holds it. up well all this time later I mean some things I'd say like if you go back if you go back and play Resident Evil mm you can sort of get into it fairly quickly. Right. But there are these, like, minor details that makes it slightly harder to go back to Alone in the Dark. Like, for example, there is no dedicated run button. You have to, like, double tap oh, the, the up yeah. key. And that can be really really thin, finicky at times. And also just the fact that you don't have, like, as, again, like in Resident Evil, if you want to interact with something, there's just the one button. In Alone in the Dark, if you want to like rummage around a drawer you have to go into a menu and then select action uh. and then like search and then you can do that um so it's it's more like it's leaning more towards the traditional like adventure games in that regard um so it it can take some getting used to and the combat system as well but the the trick there is just always always kick just do yeah. kicks. Always kick. The kick. The kick is is yeah. your main weapon in this game. Unless you have like ammo for your shotgun, then kicking. Always Just kick. Keep kicking. Always kick. Do the high kicks all over, over high, and over again, like you're doing a dance your number. Way. ABK, yeah. Always high kick kicking. that ghost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like when you're playing fighting games and you do the leg sweep over and over again yeah. in order to win. Like that's yeah. what you do in Alone in the Dark, but it's just high kicks. <laughs> cheese, cheese to win. You know. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Do you want to? Do you want to? You want to win or you want to uh, uh, not win? So yeah. That's, cheese yeah. in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God, there it is. Oh, gosh. <laughs> the illuminated cheese. It's coming to haunt me. Oh, God. All right. Well, um, yeah, I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. Still going at it. Still, <laughs> I feel like I should be doing the same. That's still that. going to town. It's it's good. Um, I am i don't know how far I am through it. Um I, I'm looking at my my Steam library page for it, and it says, you've played for 30 hours. Would you recommend this game to others? <laughs> you know, like, well, I can't do that yet. I haven't beaten it or gotten close to the ending. But yeah. it was funny. I was looking at the Reddit for Baldur's Gate 3, and somebody, um, there was a post where people were like, they thought Act 1 was like the entire game. And they, they, weren't, <laughs> saying, they weren't saying that as a slight. They were like, oh, 
it just asked me if I want to move on to act two. I've already been playing for 40 hours. Uh-huh. <laughs> and there are three acts. That's, long how, that's how long it took for me to beat, like, Mass Effect 3 recently. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it's dense. And I didn't, I mean, it didn't take me that long to get through act one. Uh, I think I'm in the, in this, on my save file. I'm into act two at about 18 hours. Um, and that makes me think I missed something. In Act One, <laughs> people yep. are like forty hours on Act One. Are like, oh god, I, did I miss something? Did I did I miss an area or something like that? Yeah, I keep circling back. Uh, I find myself circling back, and I just like, I could be, I theoretically could be out of the Underdark by now, out of out, or or out of the Shadowlands by now. Uh, okay, but I got a wild hair and was like, there was something back there that I, let's do that, let's do that instead. Let's do that instead. Let's do all the side quests. Well, that's the thing is it doesn't necessarily position them as side quests. No, that's true. That's true. These are all main quests, kind of. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah. Um, So, yeah, Baldur's Gate 3. The only thing, it's basically Baldur's Gate 3, you know, uh, during the day uh, and then uh, Halls of Torment while I'm sitting uh, watching TV at night, and Halls of Torment Pim is basically a vampire survivors style game, but its oh. art style is Diablo. It's like Diablo okay. one art style, but vampire vampire survivors mechanics. Um, and it's fun. Sounds neat. It is neat. It's it's a lot slower than Vampire Survivors, and it doesn't have all of the bells and whistles of vampires, the addictive bells and whiz- whistles of vampire survivors, but it's cool. You know, it's a neat little game. Um, you, know, you just walk around bashing skeletons. So... <laughs> what else could you ask for? That's I mean, a... Not much. What else could you ask for? Um, yeah, so that's that's about it. That's... I, I think you've covered everything, Phil, on, a, on, on Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get it, get too <laughs> far into it. I just need to beat it before the end of the month because I, there's two games coming out yeah. uh, that I are, am looking forward to, and that is going to be uh, uh, Armored Core 6 is, is coming out, um, and Blasphemous 2. Yeah, Blasphemous 2 is the one <laughs> oh. I, have to, I have to be ready for that. Uh, Blasphemous, the first Blasphemous caused me to dust off my YouTube channel, which I had not updated in nearly a year to make a video about the metaphors in Blasphemous. Like, so it's personal. Uh, <laughs> Catholic Every simulator. Every once in a while, uh, it, feels uh, like, fine. Write a fucking essay. God damn it. I was so frustrated. I was like, I thought I was done with this shit. And I, I did it. And I still get it, it. It did okay. And I still get comments from people being like, you know, it doesn't mean that. I'm like, fuck you. I, I hate YouTube. This sucks. Uh, why did I do that? I put myself I, I literally, out there again. I literally got comments like that. Like today on yeah, my Saw yeah. video, like for some reason, I guess it's because Saw Ten is coming out. Uh, yeah. That yeah, video oh God, that I made yeah. on the Saw films got a boost, <laughs> and, and and it's gotten a lot more views because of that. A lot of good comments, but also a whole lot of like, well, actually, why do you do like a political reading of this? Because th- that doesn't work with this. And and no, Jigsaw is not a like a right wing vigilante type. Like he's actually leftist, and it's like. Okay. I'm not gonna engage. Nope. I, I I I can't. I, I want to because I a part of me thinks it's gonna be fun, but yeah. then it's just gonna keep going and it going and is. going and <laughs> like some comments I will reply to, but then there is just a whole lot that I just know that this is gonna be a rabbit hole that will swallow the rest of my day if I allow yeah. it to. Like you are correct. That's sir. that's absurd because like Jigsaw is literally the poster child for. Retribu- retributive justice as opposed yes. to restorative justice. Like, he yep. is the poster child for... He's like, if Jerry Seinfeld was a fucking serial killer, like, <laughs> he's like, he takes these little... These these things people did and he's... And Jerry Seinfeld, like, Seinfeld, on Seinfeld, he would dump people over the dumbest little thing. You know, he's like, well, you know, she's a close talker. We're like... 
Yeah. Well, Jigsaw would put them in like a, a thing where they have to stare into a mirror and the mirror's fucking daggers. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> oh my God. Don't give them any ideas, Kevin. <laughs> You're going to eat this up. It's true. I mean, I would like to see that trap. Though. I, I would like to see that trap. kind of yeah. fun. <laughs> But yeah, I don't, it, uh, it, it, you know, the fucking fuckers get down there and their YouTubes <laughs> and they're they're arguing it's the so right dumb. wing dick bags and <laughs> Dennis Prager's and the. <laughs> I don't know. Not, I don't have. A, I don't actually have a fully. Show. <laughs> I don't have a fully formed Wait, rant. What? I, know, I don't have a fully formed rant. This How do week, I leave though. the call? Uh, but, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> I'm a I'm a militant centrist. I know. I know. <laughs> That's why we yeah. brought you on to keep things nice and balanced. Nice, <laughs> fair, and balanced. I think, the way I think a centrist in Sweden is still a liberal in America, though, if it helps. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's actually true. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, that is that is very valid, actually. Yeah. <laughs> still to the left in in the in the U.S. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, <laughs> like, there's a reason they call us communist Sweden. Like yeah. it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and for for the record, we're not like we no. we could be way more left leaning and like the the actual like most popular red party here, uh, red here actually meaning left, uh, is, like they they are just going more and more to to like the conservative side because uh, they're they're seeing what's going on and they're like, well, we're still cool. Yeah, we want to yeah. win, so we'd better hedge our bets. Yeah, it's like yeah, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Italians are loving fascism again. So <laughs> <laughs> that didn't take that. That train's never late. Okay, all right. On. You know the trains were never late. You know he made he made those oh, dear trains. Lord. God he damn made it! Those just keeps getting darker. I, right on I, time. I did not mean to do that. Right. You I, know, I just threw the door open on that one. I have no one to blame but myself. Uh, you know, you could say a lot of things about Mussolini. <laughs> I mean that is true. That is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can say a lot of things. You, you sure can. You sure can. Not Objectively finishing that true. statement. Um, <laughs> Pim, do you got anything you want to plug before before we uh, before we go? Uh, well, <laughs> I just have to call myself after all this. Uh, understandable. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Yeah, give yourself. <sighs> just take a little breath. Little breath. Whew. Okay, so yeah, I have a YouTube channel called Pim's Crypt where I discuss, again, most things horror. I have a, a video coming out, I don't know when, maybe it's even out by the time this episode airs, but uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, just just the, the, the name of the video is How the Internet Changed Found Footage Horror. Mm. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that. And again, I'm making a Alone in the Dark retrospective type video as well. So check that out when when those are out. Uh, I'm on Patreon, Pem's Crypt there as well. I was about to say I'm on Twitter, but I'm thinking of leaving Twitter for good, considering things uh -huh. yeah. happening there. Yeah, we're on Blue Sky now, so yeah, we have, go, we find, yeah. go find us there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same. I'm on Blue Sky. I'm, I'm, I'm on Tumblr now as, as well. I, I feel oh. sort of sort of like maybe I'm not the person who should be here like this it's, it feels like this is the cool kids area <laughs> maybe maybe it's it's like a sort of younger demographic as well they started but, letting uh, uh, they started letting porn back on tumblr right yeah and my work basically counts as porn so great, great. you know so, that's, so you're fine so you're good i well, uh, yeah yeah no it's, i agree, um, I agree it's with porn tumblr. for the eyes i agree well, with I guess tumblr. That's regular porn. i'm like every time i go on tumblr i'm like i don't I don't know what you all are talking about, and at <laughs> yeah. this point, I'm scared to ask. Yeah. <laughs> it is go. a whole other another language there, <laughs> definitely. It's one of those sites where you're really gonna go like, yeah, I'm, I am, I, I'm not hip with the kids anymore. I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yeah, hip. Yeah. I am Principal Skinner right now. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. no, it's me or the, the tumblers who are wrong. Who are wrong. <laughs> um. <laughs> It actually is me. It's 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 me. <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us, Pim. Uh, if you want to find out more about us, follow us on social media at Pixelit Pod. Basically, wherever 
wherever you you look, there we are uh, at Pixlet Pod. <laughs> uh, go to our website, pixletpod.com, where you can sign up for our newsletter or join our Discord or do both. You know, you don't have to do one or the other. Or if you're not into the whole social media thing, but you are into, let's say, Patreon, uh, go to patreon.com slash pixletpod, and from there you can... You can become a patron of our fine arts, or you don't have to be a patron. You can just be a follower. You can follow us on Patreon now, free of charge, gratis, and use that to get the updates that you want. If you if you don't want to be in social media and you still want updates, you can use Patreon.com to do that. Uh, that will do it for uh, for tonight's episode. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>